So, um, hello everybody. My name is uh, Stefan Simeon uh, for those uh, who are our guest uh, today and you don't know me. Um, we are uh, with uh, my colleagues, uh, Christy Borgan and Emil Burba, we are teaching uh, a studio in uh, Ion Minko University in Bucharest, Romania. And uh, this is uh, Matsokyo Talks uh, number five. We are very happy and honored to have Professor Nevan Fuchs as a guest today. And um, I want to say that uh, to, to give a little perspective to this uh, presence, uh, I had the chance to meeting uh, Nevan. Uh, I think one year ago, when uh, yes, we, one year ago. yeah, when we tried to apply for a joint studio uh, project together, yeah. which uh, we didn't win, but maybe we'll be able to continue that uh, that uh, yeah. that dream. And um, uh, following uh, this uh, meeting um, uh, and to previous uh, facts, uh, for example, you you also had uh, Laura Christa as a student. Uh, uh, who was a student of ours in Bucharest, and uh, to the fact that you have been invited to the diploma jury here in Bucharest, we had the, the chance. I had the chance to 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 debate architecture with you and to hear your thoughts and uh, and um, uh, advices for students uh, from our university. And I am I am a very um, very uh, happy to to have you as a guest. I would like to say that uh, in this um, in this uh, focus uh, as uh, part of the uh, academic environment of architecture, I would like Nevan to say that uh, from my uh, online discoveries, I have found out that your name has uh, has is is linked to uh, to the fact that you with uh, Alvar Alto to the fact that you have um, done um, a practice there during time. And then also you have met uh, Giancarlo De Carlo. And uh, uh, also, uh, I think it's a very beautiful tradition. Um, the fact that uh, you have been a teaching assistant to Professor Zverefen. And um, this, uh, this tradition is very important in architecture education um, for, uh, for us. And um, I would like to say that you are uh, leading the studio of architecture uh, named Rom Og Technik, space and uh, um, and uh, technology. If I'm not, not uh, technique, technique, technique. Sorry, not technology and technique in um, in Oslo School of Architecture and Design. And uh, I would like to say that uh, this studio um, is a very important model for what architectural pedagogy could and should mean in our uh, times, maybe especially in this uh, difficult period of the pandemics, uh, when uh, we, are, we seem to be uh, uh, at far ends one to each other. And you have, you have had this beautiful initiative of uh, bringing uh, great architects and professors together in your studio and uh, to, to teach together, to, to offer to students um, uh, multiple points of view and uh, cultural references. And I would like to name just a few great architects which have uh, been present in your studio as debate partners. Uh, I would like to name Peter St. John, Kirsten Gers, Yunia Ishigami, Christian Kerez, Tony Fretton, uh, and so on. Uh, Rafael Zuber, Goha Segava, Ivey Vey. It's uh, really, Rian Ishizawa, it's really an impressive, uh, impressive, impressive list. And um, um, even though it's a very big uh, dream uh, for us, uh, we would also like to be part of this uh, uh, of this uh, cultural architectural stage where uh, theory and practice uh, come together and uh, uh, they uh, they offer themselves as lessons for students. Uh, also, as a final introduction to, to you. I would like to say that your studio is a very active one. Uh, the, the academic studio you're leading is a very active one and you have won recently um, this uh, uh, prize, important prize in 2015 um, in the architectural competition hosted by uh, a foundation in Japan. I, I'm not uh, trying to pronounce uh, the, the name for the inverted house. Um, 
which uh, came out, if I understood rightly, of your studio with um, also the important uh, participations of uh, Rafael Zuber and Laura Cristea, and um, which uh, you had the generosity to attend to, um, to an exhibition, architectural exhibition, which um, has been uh, organized here in Bucharest at the Ion Minku House. And uh, I am very eager to, to hearing you and to, to, to having um, your presentation uh, for us today. Okay, should I continue? Stephen? Yes, yes, okay. this was the introduction. This was introduction. Uh, thank you so much uh, for introduction and for inviting. And thanks everybody for attending. Um, uh, well, I, I'm a bit surprised that people are attending, <laughs> but this is uh, in a way, uh, this is in a way uh, challenging and, uh, and I like it also. Um, so first, uh, yes, I was, uh, uh, I was having practice uh, in uh, Alvar Alta's office and I worked uh, three or four years with Giancarlo De Carlo and Peter Smithson and Team Ten, and that's actually how I arrived to Norway uh, through Elod. Uh, but uh, uh, when you do things with so many famous people or architects, you never know if you profit something or not, uh, because to be good uh, after so many good people, it's not an easy, easy task. Uh, uh, so, in, a, in some way, this is also a burden, which I still somehow feel, uh, yeah, uh, threatening uh, working days. Uh, then, uh, uh, yes, about the team, uh, uh, I, I, I never uh, did any lecture about uh, architectural history. Uh, uh, and I understand the students of Stefan are doing uh, a project uh, and study and project uh, concerned uh, architectural history. And uh, he called it instrumentalizing architectural history. And then I added this uh, subtitle in favor of architectonic experience. So this is kind of uh, my answer to uh, to uh, curriculum of the of the answer or addition to curriculum of the studio. Uh, so we go uh, we go now forward. Uh, uh, I just have to uh, yeah. So here is the first thing I want to say. Uh, uh, I really admire that uh, somebody is studying architecture by studying history of architecture, but uh, this is not actually uh, 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 without troubles. So here is a question, how a single building project uh, can exist in only one singular but historically significant way without being derived from historical ideology? which actually doesn't exist anymore today and without relying on just images. Uh, so every student of architecture and every architect should actually is coping with this, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with this uh, question. Uh, uh, history of architecture is uh, enriching our, our knowledge and enriching our experience, but at the same time, it is, uh, 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 it is a uh, demand for us to be contemporary. And this contemporariness of architecture is something that uh, uh, in some way uh, is in a, in, a, in a kind of contradiction with the premises of uh, historical architecture. So I, I, I keep that in mind and, uh, and uh, I, I just, uh, yeah, sorry, what happened now? Meanwhile, I would like to invite everybody who wants to ask a question to drop them in the chat uh, uh, part of this uh, Zoom interface. Thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, I will start with our uh, website uh, just for a very brief moment of time. Uh, so the, here is the uh, room of technique is the, is the website and uh, here you see uh, several uh, columns. Uh, one is studio projects and another is case studies. Our studio projects were always done through case studies or in some kind of connection to the case studies. Uh, and I would just uh, like to show this is mainly to the students uh, how it uh, worked uh, uh, in one of the of the uh, in one of the projects. And I chose a project from 2017 uh, autumn uh, solo house, which was uh, done together with uh, with the Kerstin Gers whom you know uh, uh, made a beautiful solo house in Mataranya in Spain. Uh, before uh, showing some images about it, I would like to also show to you what is Mataranya. What is the place where, uh, where uh, this small building should uh, stand? Uh, so this is a very short video to uh, how Mataranya place looks like. Uh, it is a kind of forested uh, uh, jungle, uh, uh, somewhere between uh, Barcelona and Valencia, uh, uh, with uh, uh, a few fields, uh, deserted fields of olives, uh, but mainly extremely, extremely wide at the moment. This is a place where uh, uh, solo houses uh, are uh, Party. And this was the site for the uh, task. Uh, so I go back to case studies, uh, which we started with the students before doing the project. Uh, so you see here the case studies which uh, uh, we thought could be useful for doing this project. Uh, before we realized that uh, actually uh, students uh, have a lot of uh, very conventional ideas about small houses, resort houses and so on. So this uh, kind of uh, 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 study uh, introducing, as you see, Palladio, uh, 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 Scamozzi, Algiati, uh, Alvaro Sisa, Lina Bobardi, Corbusier, Giuliano da Sangalo, Aldo Rossi, John Lautner, Schinkel, uh, Emmanuel Pauli, Inigo Jones, uh, Shinohara, etc., was extremely useful uh, to enter actually the the, the discussion about small house in a, in a, a huge uh, wild uh, landscape. Uh, and then you probably uh, remember uh, uh, some of these uh, buildings. And now I'm showing the, uh, the projects uh, which uh, uh, really uh, uh, were derived in some way, one could say, uh, from, from these case studies. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, well, it's a solo house, it's a bridge where you, uh, which crosses the valley and where you could park the car and you live under the bridge. Uh, and uh, in this kind of landscape, so this is a plan. Uh, and this is actually the project. And his, uh, as you remember, uh, his uh, case study, uh, uh, his case study was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, Rudolf Olgiati House for Dr. Aleman, which has uh, immediately nothing to do with his project. Uh, and this is a kind of interesting uh, chemistry, how say, work in chemistry. Uh, how 
uh, case studies could uh, after after uh, certain uh, time and discussion, fruitful discussions could bring a project uh, completely different and uh, and uh, 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 very uh, uh, and kind of new. Uh, well, then I could uh, uh, I could probably uh, take another uh, another example. Uh, Kaya's project, uh, you see this is a very small uh, box, I would say. Uh, it's a kind of classical box, but then you realize that this one box is not one box, that there are two boxes, one down by the river and another one on the top of the mountain. Uh, they just share the same kind of uh, language. And uh, uh, her starting point was Aldo Rossi, as I remember. Now, after this years, she liked very much the small building of Aldo Rossi, and that's uh, why. Uh, uh, okay, what happened now? Hmm. Yes, I have to do it again. It seems. Uh, Yeah, okay, two houses, one on the, on the edge of the, of the uh, uh, waterfront and another uh, above in the mountain. Uh, and the language of these two houses somehow uh, uh, is uh, in, uh, in some kind of connection to Ross's small house. And uh, you see the drawings of her project and uh, It seems that I have a second uh, screen. Uh, this is the facade. Uh, this is a smaller uh, box by the river. And then you see, I'm showing this project because it's, it's really super, super basic. And we encouraged uh, her to uh, carry on with uh, her vision. So I'm not showing the projects which uh, uh, everybody could immediately uh, uh, realize are a beautiful project, uh, but uh, projects which uh, really had something to do with, uh, uh, with, uh, 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 with the way we were working. Uh, then another uh, one, let's say third one, Johannes project, uh, this is the top of his house, uh, which is a bit mysterious. Uh, uh, and the uh, house is a kind of uh, technological uh, device, one could say. And that's uh, uh, why it looks like uh, it uh, looks. But then, uh, then, Yes, that's how it looks. It's a big platform uh, on, on, on which you spend your, your, your time and just sleep under it. And, uh, and then uh, to, to make a point once again, uh, the guy did actually, uh, Giuliano de Sangalos, uh, 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 case study with the uh, 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 which is uh, also interesting uh, for his platform because uh, 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 Sangala was the guy who was doing platforms and columns on the platforms and new columns on new platforms and that's how the building actually uh, rise up. 
So this is probably in too many details, uh, the, uh, uh, the point that, uh, that case studies and the projects uh, were actually uh, done, uh, uh, were done uh, closely together. So uh, we look at the history of architecture as buildings and spaces and the experiences they produce, always imagining real architecture out of past architecture, working with things that are already there, constantly observing what exists around in a different times and places. We find out buildings that we are fascinated with, uh, discover new things, anonymous and classical, that we want to make into a start of new design. So this is a process of continuity, of interpretation, reinterpretation, also very wrong sometimes interpretation, uh, translation and transformation. This is exactly what we are doing with that, creating a new, uh, fresh relationship uh, in a broken uh, continuity. Uh, I will also uh, show several, uh, several uh, buildings, which I think could be also useful to understand what, what happens in the reality of architecture uh, in relation, relation with uh, uh, historic architecture and uh, contemporary architecture. Uh, this is a sort of fence uh, uh, house uh, or villa in New Shopping. This is the model. Uh, the model is very beautiful and you see how the building is organized. It's uh, organized in a cross uh, shaped form, uh, reminding us immediately to uh, Palladio's architecture. Uh, but uh, what, what I know, because I was working with uh, Serafin for many years, that he really liked Palladio's architecture. Uh, and he especially, uh, liked his corners. Uh, these corners are actually very different than, uh, than our central spaces of Palladio's architecture. They are kind of intimate. This is a corner, I didn't find a better picture, but this is a corner of Malcontenta. This is not the corner of, uh, of uh, Rotonda, but the corner of Rotonda is actually very similar. Uh, so Fenn liked these corners of, uh, of, uh, of Palladio and turning his uh, plan uh, into the opposite, into a kind of uh, inverted his plan uh, because he was a modernist architect, uh, opening the, the uh, corners and closing the axis. So this is the plan of uh, Villa in uh, uh, Swedish uh, mule shopping. You see the, the uh, central space of Palladio is now been taken with the water core, with the kitchen, which is very beautiful, with bathroom and the life uh, actually uh, 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 go, goes on around this uh, core. Uh, and uh, uh, the entrance is uh, also in the corner. It's not central. It's uh, here in the corner, and uh, and this is the living room. And uh, uh, sorry, this is the entrance here in the corner. Then this is the living room, and then there's a sleeping part, and this is a working part. Uh, that's how the central part uh, looks like. Uh, uh, this is the kitchen, with, which is highest uh, space in the house. Uh, with the light uh, always, uh, 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 which lightens also the, the plan of the house. Uh, then in one of the axes, there is a living uh, space with a big fireplace uh, and the corner. And the corners are special attention, but the special attention with the shelves, uh, which are holding on one side glass and uh, on the other side, shelves for uh, toys or for books, uh, 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 so that they could also be working spaces. Uh, 
in the night, these corners look uh, like that. Uh, so the light uh, is coming out uh, through the corner and through the central part of the kitchen. Uh, this is the uh, this is the central uh, axis of uh, of uh, of the house, which is, uh, as you uh, remember, extremely different than the model the house started with. So this is one nice, uh, I'll say, uh, discretion about the uh, relationship between the comp contemporary and historic. Then I take another example. This is, uh, I'm using examples uh, actually from Scandinavian architecture, which uh, in some way one could say uh, is already history of architecture. So this is Sigurd Leverance and uh, St. Petri Church in uh, Klippen. Uh, here you see the plan. Uh, uh, you realize uh, number three is the main space of the, of the church. Uh, and you and around it is a parochial center, uh, creating a, a courtyard or L-shaped courtyard uh, in between these two. What is in some way interesting uh, is uh, experience of uh, of uh, of this architecture. You see, uh, there is a main entrance, but this main entrance, in spite of its main entrance. Uh, main entrance is for congregations, for big festivals and big messes and so on, uh, oriented to the city. But actually, nobody, this is not used as entrance. Everyday entrance is this one. Uh, when you come along to the church, you should enter here. Uh, the God is a difficult thing. So you should, uh, this main entrance uh, for a person shouldn't be immediately present. So you should search for it in some way, and then you uh, enter the space. But there are also two other, or three other entrances, one for the priest, another one for, uh, uh, for a, 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 a guy who is dealing with the bell, and the third one, uh, the people who are getting married. So this one space, uh, has actually uh, five or six entrances, which is quite unusual. Uh, and the point uh, actually uh, of, the, of that is uh, to, uh, uh, this is one entrance, which is let's say the main entrance of the city for the big congregations. And this is the secondary uh, entrance, you would say, but this is actually the main entrance for the persons or people who are coming every day to the church. Uh, uh, this is the, the further entrance to from the bell part and from the, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, chapel uh, uh, from the other side. So these uh, other entrances are not so very obvious uh, when you enter you enter into the space which is completely dark. Uh, and then uh, all that what might be a problem for so many entrances get in some way annulled with such a darkness and going into the space, it becomes more and more dark. Uh, this is extremely beautiful, uh, actually, uh, 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 idea how to organize uh, 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 such a small church. Uh, it's built completely by uh, brick. Uh, and when I say completely, it also means that, uh, that bricks shouldn't be cut because uh, it's a famous story that for Leverance, uh, uh, every guy, every person should be used. There is a use for every person. And so there is a use for every brick. Uh, so all the bricks are whole, and it created some kind of diverted way of building. So all the details and uh, uh, and uh, 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 building site, everything is some kind uh, uh, under the under the uh, uh, control of such diverted way of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, understanding elements of architecture. 
uh, in contrast to such a rough uh, uh, brick, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there is there are glazed parts, <clears throat> uh, windows which are just uh, glass panes uh, attached to the wall. Uh, that uh, actually makes because they are attached to the wall. Uh, that makes that you read the thickness of the wall as a complete volume from the inside. And uh, outside this, uh, 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 it's uh, outside this somehow uh, much closer to you because you don't see the frame of the of the of the window. Uh, so this contrast between this uh, uh, technological and reflecting and uh, uh, glass panes and the way how glass fixed to the wall and this robust and uh, archaic kind of construction of the wall uh, makes uh, 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 supports actually uh, this dark space on the inside. Uh, but uh, one could also say that this is uh, this architecture is full of references uh, to Swedish uh, vernacular, to classical architecture, to uh, Persian architecture of the brick and so on and so forth. So all these historical references, how, how say melt into, into a new a singular piece that uh, with a very strong kind of uh, experiential value of space. Uh, yes, so this is then, which I should also be mentioned now in the middle of the space, there is one column, uh, also part of certain traditions of uh, constructive traditions, one column, uh, carrying two beams and the roof, uh, which uh, has uh, obviously uh, a strong symbolic uh, 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 addition or, or symbolic uh, 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 content to the to the space of the church. Uh, well, I could go on to through very many examples uh, where. Uh, uh, one should actually, uh, uh, where one could immediately start thinking how to, uh, 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 how to uh, use or how to turn a historic architecture into contemporary. I will just list some of you because they are just uh, my uh, or our preferences uh, uh, as social uh, gardens, uh, as, uh, uh, Shinohara's uh, 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 house in white with one column uh, in the in the center uh, of space. Another Shinohara's small mountain uh, uh, house uh, house in the mountain, which is just a project, but extremely uh, strong and uh, influential. Uh, Schinkel. Uh, well, I'm showing really architecture of different kind of histories, uh, from Schinkel to the uh, architecture of, uh, of uh, 2000 years ago. All that is a kind of material and rough material that we make a new architecture from. Uh, this is uh, 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 this uh, Schinkel's house in Berlin, which doesn't exist anymore, uh, was showing extremely delicate connections in between, uh, in between these uh, spaces that you or rooms that you see on the picture, uh, then uh, John Lautner's uh, 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 then uh, uh, Alvaro Caesar's uh, uh, tea house in uh, uh, Boa Nova uh, in Porto or Matsuhinos. Uh, and uh, there could be many others. This is Serenia uh, I don't know if Laura is, uh, is listening or not, but this is her favorite uh, uh, building, a uh, small uh, Japanese uh, temple uh, in residential temple in Kyoto uh, with uh, extremely uh, 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 interesting reorientation of the whole uh, of the whole uh, 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 whole building uh, through this room where you drink the tea, which is the only space oriented to the holy mountain, 
uh, and which you don't uh, realize by entering, which is hidden in the in the body of of, of the temple. Uh, and then I would uh, probably to go on uh, in a little bit of the same way. Uh, uh, would uh, uh, like to say that uh, that architecture is about uh, conception, construction, and building of spaces. This is the most important thing, I think. It deals with the human engagement with these spaces, with movement through them, uh, which uh, uh, then creates a basic physical and sensual experience, but also, of course, intellectual experience or intellectual relationship of understanding uh, with space and architecture. Uh, that is this experience, which is uh, uh, a job of an architect to create. And that's this experience, which is the base of architectural idea. Uh, in uh, in uh, one of uh, uh, last semesters we had, we were working with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Atelier Oljati uh, on a project uh, which uh, uh, I hope you see uh, is uh, uh, foundation, skeleton and no walls. Uh, this is a project uh, which, uh, which is a bit different than the others. And, uh, uh, because it's uh, uh, somehow based on the principles of uh, statics of space. Uh, but uh, 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 paradoxically, uh, a static of space is also architectural history of foundations, skeletons, and no walls, uh, which should generate architectonic ideas, which later uh, could be turned into spatial experiences and into new architecture. Uh, so uh, this is just the start of uh, of of uh, of uh, dealing with uh, with this uh, theme. Uh, here is the uh, picture of uh, Christian Keretz uh, uh, of a building with one wall. Uh, so question here is uh, 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 why and how this building with one wall could be a building with no walls. Uh, and then uh, what I what I what I'm trying now uh, with uh, with this question is that uh, that the way forward is really not straightforward. Uh, when you discuss no walls uh, uh, theme, then you uh, from the point of experience, then you should try to imagine yourself leaning on this wall, like leaning on the mountain, and there is something behind you that you actually don't experience. It makes space, but you not you don't primarily experience it. So that's why this uh, building uh, was actually one of our favorites, how to say, uh, uh, references for uh, uh, buildings with no wall. In spite that it's called a uh, uh, building with one wall. Then uh, a skeleton, where the whole building is actually St. Gorgias uh, Church in uh, La Libella is a uh, whole building is becoming a skeleton, is becoming a foundation. Uh, and then a skeleton, which is uh, extremely uh, special skeleton by uh, Villanova Artigas of, the, of his bus station uh, outside, uh, outside uh, 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 Sao Paulo. Uh, and then I go quickly through the projects. Uh, this is a project uh, about foundation and uh, uh, it's called the uh, Summer and Winter Theater in uh, Nanjing, I think. And you see two theaters. One theater is a foundation of another. And uh, uh, that's uh, why 
this is a project of interpreting spatially and experientially the phenomenon of foundations. That is the model. Then there is a, a project dealing with the skeleton. Uh, and this is a cemetery uh, under the city square. Uh, also another Chinese uh, project, very uh, beautiful. This skeleton is actually a place uh, where you uh, place urns. And uh, from the square, you go with the lift and with the stair down into the chapel. Uh, uh, that's how you passing through the urns uh, going down to the chapel. Uh, third project is a project of uh, wall uh, uh, in the uh, in oasis. Uh, how this wall in oasis could uh, organize living in oasis. So you see there is on the top of this wall, there is a small space where people could sleep. And on the platform, which is holding this wall, the people are uh, performing their daily functions. This is the plan of the, of the, of the uh, ground level uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the platform uh, for daily activities of, of life and the stairs leading up to the to the uh, uh, sleeping uh, uh, part of the building. Uh, then another one is uh, office with the uh, changing columns. Uh, the guy called it like that. Uh, so this uh, office uh, building uh, where uh, uh, you see one of the plans which uh, the columns becomes, uh, this is the principle, let's say. So the, here we don't meet actually history of architecture, but we do meet some kind of history of something uh, which is turned into new architecture. Uh, so uh, columns are becoming uh, more and more dense as you go up, creating uh, uh, more and more private spaces for work. Uh, and then uh, also one uh, project uh, for a potter. This is a workshop for a pottery workshop uh, and the uh, living space. Uh, huge uh, space uh, uh, of the workshop where people also eat together and then uh, stairs uh, leading down, uh, leading up into the uh, living part of the, of the house. Uh, and the last one, I think, is a, a project uh, uh, of the house in the forest, where, uh, uh, which is a skeleton kind of uh, uh, idea, uh, where skeletons are, or uh, columns are actually shafts where people live. So open space uh, of the uh, living room is between the shafts of, uh, of uh, irregular kind of uh, uh, a skeleton uh, where specialized functions are performed. Uh, in between them, this uh, uh, space, there is a space for, for, for living. That's how it looks. Uh, well, and very short, uh, we are not doing only, uh, uh, we are not doing only teaching, uh, which is by the way, coming to uh, end very soon, I think. Uh, uh, we are also uh, uh, doing, uh, uh, I don't know, architecture in one to one scale, as this project uh, uh, for inverted house uh, built in uh, 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 at Hokkaido uh, in the north of Japan. Uh, this uh, uh, aerial photo of uh, of uh, uh, of this eastern part of Hokkaido, close to uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, where was our site? Uh, uh, we won uh, uh, 
after second year the participating in this Lixil Japanese uh, uh, founded uh, university competition, we finally won with the uh, inverted house and with this idea. The traditional space uh, uh, on the left and uh, inverted space uh, on the right. Uh, inverted space uh, uh, um, created by uh, crossing of uh, two walls is uh, 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 just a basic uh, structure of uh, 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 of uh, uh, many uh, differentiated and uh, fragmented uh, 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 climatic and living and whatever experiences around this world. Uh, so here you see the uh, here you see the model from the uh, from the uh, working space uh, uh, where this idea of fragments and uh, uh, particular experiences that were attached, so to say, to this uh, uh, cross-shaped wall is uh, showed extremely successfully almost like a like a kind of a prototype of uh, of the way of thinking uh, and uh, and uh, uh, looking at it uh, uh, one could also uh, uh, think further about the fragments and the relationship between fragments and the whole uh, where uh, fragments uh, a small parts uh, separated from uh, uh, something uh, uh, bring uh, with itself also physical experience, not only of the part uh, they represent, but also physical experience of, uh, of a larger reality, uh, architecture as a whole, uh, or simply larger reality they are part of. And then this is a kind of extremely, uh, rich project uh, 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 with this kind of uh, uh, working, uh, how to say, conclusion. Uh, and that's probably the reason why it still holds uh, on uh, uh, in Pinterest and I don't know, all these kind of social medias, it's still getting some attention. This is the plan of the, of the roof structure. I forgot to say, uh, that, uh, in, that the project was done together with the Raphael Zuber and four students and, uh, and uh, Laura was one of the students. None of them are students at the moment, so they are working and uh, uh, they are young architects. Uh, and uh, so I could just say that uh, uh, probably this working constellation on this project uh, uh, was unique. Uh, which also made that uh, this project uh, had such a uh, such a strong kind of uh, 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 is, is still very strong. Uh, this uh, roof uh, structure and what is interesting in this roof structure is that you see, uh, for example, that there is uh, one big roof here uh, with one column. This uh, roof of the of the outside room. Uh, here is the roof of the smaller kitchen, but also with one column. Uh, then there is, a, uh, there is a, 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 another roof, which uh, also has one column. And then there is an outside sleeping room, uh, which uh, also, as you will see, doesn't have a column, but it has one support. Uh, this is uh, also quite interesting that all these particular experiences or particular spaces have just uh, uh, exaggeratedly one uh, structural member, uh, not creating uh, not two columns or three columns, which will give a kind of order and probably influence uh, uh, the rest of the building, but uh, just one column, which uh, uh, in some way makes that these spaces under these roofs are uh, uh, 
uh, are uh, uh, fragments uh, as well as they are part of the whole. Uh, I will show you the pictures of these columns holding these roofs. And you will see how different actually uh, these columns are and how different in some way the spaces uh, under these roofs are. So this is the column holding the roof above the outside space. Uh, this is a kind of uh, column uh, holding the roof uh, uh, above the inside space. Uh, this is the column, or I would say wall, uh, but almost like a, a photograph, like a column uh, uh, holding the roof above this outside sleeping space and so on and so forth. So I think there are seven or eight different types of roofs. And uh, of course, when they come together, uh, uh, then uh, uh, they create this kind of uh, image. But uh, this uh, uh, relationship between fragments and the whole are so uh, nicely resolved in this super complicated uh, or complicated complex uh, architecture, simple and complex architecture at the same time. Uh, yes, here is the image of the, of the cross-shaped wall and uh, the, uh, uh, the roofs which are somehow uh, attached to this wall. And here is the hole. Uh, you also realize many uh, different rooms uh, uh, under the roofs and uh, and this main structure of the uh, cross-shaped uh, walls that are holding together the, the, the hole. Uh, back side of the building, which is kind of super smooth, uh, protecting from the snow uh, and different from the front side of the building. Uh, here is the plan. Uh, I mean, you have seen this building on the exhibition in, in Bucharest, so it's not uh, uh, to say very much about it, but this plan is also very beautiful. Uh, passing through the garden, you actually enter from the outside to the outside. So there, this is an outside space and this is an outside space. The entrance into the building is from outside to the outside. And, uh, and so the life actually uh, goes on around the walls uh, from uh, uh, outside living room, uh, small kitchen, uh, entering into a, a, a inside uh, a room, uh, living room and uh, sleeping room, which is a very high space and uh, bathroom and outside bathroom and uh, sleeping space uh, on the outside terrace. So the uh, plan is super simple, but also quite complex at the same time. Now some pictures of entrance uh, uh, to the platform uh, from outside to the outside. Uh, uh, the image of the outside uh, living room. Uh, uh, then the outside living room and the kitchen uh, 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 pictured from in, from the in front of the house. Uh, this is the relationship between kitchen and the small kitchen and the and the living and the uh, eating room. Let's say eating platform. You see the table here, and then you uh, turn around this wall and enter the. Uh, there is a kitchen door here, but you also enter into the long space. Uh, of the inside room. And uh, this is a very high space uh, uh, with the fireplace. All these spaces where the wall, uh, uh, walls meet in the center uh, create uh, uh, three uh, different fireplaces, which is a very basic kind of manifestation of, uh, of, uh, of living, so to say. Uh, here is the section of the inside space. Uh, and the uh, view to the uh, bathroom and the height of this, uh, you see the height of the inside space. Uh, 
well, not to make it more uh, uh, complicated or complex than it is, uh, building was, of course, uh, also is, uh, 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 meant to organize the life uh, with the with the harsh code. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, so many roofs and so many microclimates and uh, uh, under these roofs. Uh, so that the people actually could experience the cold uh, uh, and the winter, which is very harsh in this part of Hokkaido, uh, uh, living outside. Uh, here is, uh, so this is in some way also ecological project, but this ecology of the project is not uh, done uh, in some extra architectural way. It is extremely architectural and turned into architecture in every moment. Uh, all these microclimates are uh, precisely calculated and uh, entrances of sun are also calculated in such a way so that the garden, uh, that the garden through which you enter the building in, uh, uh, here you see the renders, uh, in uh, uh, spring or summer could have a, a very special uh, flowers because uh, uh, snow will uh, stay for quite longer uh, because of the higher walls, uh, casting the shadow to the ground, which will uh, then produce this kind of uh, very special flowers around the house. Uh, well, uh, house is uh, made for the winter, but it's actually very beautiful for the summer as well. Uh, so this is the picture from the from the start of the day, uh, summer day, from the uh, uh, from the outside living room, and again back to the uh, back to the this question of fragment and the whole and uh, particular uh, experiences of uh, elements and experience of the whole. Uh, yes, this is the picture of, uh, of, uh, of the building in the summertime. Uh, as uh, we heard, the building became a part of a hotel and we are very happy that it's still alive in the a, in a best way, actually. Uh, then I want at the end to show you the last project that we were doing in the studio, which is a competition project uh, for China. Uh, for a new town, uh, Xiongang, uh, south of Beijing, a town, a residential town, uh, uh, taught as a new kind of garden city uh, for the city of Beijing. And this area photo you see that uh, just part, this is a huge area, uh, uh, and you see just one part of this area, uh, but you realize that uh, it consists of uh, rivers, it consists of uh, urban or small urban areas, and it uh, consists of uh, lake, because this is one of the, of the biggest uh, lake areas in, in China. Uh, the task was to make, uh, well, simply, I, I wouldn't... Uh, uh, complicate now by saying that to simply make uh, urban furniture for such a big area. And this urban uh, furniture uh, was given as 15 elements uh, 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 taught in three different areas. So which means altogether 45 elements. Uh, uh, well, I will very uh, briefly uh, go through the idea of uh, the competition, because it has also something to do with the history, but of architecture, but in a completely different way. Uh, here are three premises for our three ideas, one could say, uh, for how these uh, small actual elements should look like in this large area. So the first one is three ecologists to create a, a comfortable urban environment in three different eco uh, ecologies, urban, lake, and river. Uh, uh, second one is about identity and mass production. Uh, 
Uh, here, uh, it was proposed uh, very strong, uh, uh, very strong uh, 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 grammar or language of these elements uh, uh, of objects, uh, uh, which is in some way or could be in some way more important than uh, uh, immediately designed forms. Uh, and this, uh, 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 this uh, grammar uh, was uh, uh, defined by a uh, 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 certain amount of elements. Uh, number one, uh, using just steel and just steel plates, uh, then using just welding, not other way of connecting steel, but just welding and so on. So in this way, these uh, rules for creating uh, grammar uh, were extremely severe somehow. Uh, idea was also uh, severe, but also super simple, super basic. And the idea behind that was also that, uh, that all that could be locally produ produced uh, with the people in these villages and cities uh, and uh, reproduced when necessary. Uh, here, just few images about the uh, uh, history of steel uh, in architecture and around architecture. So this is a uh, verbs uh, made by Richard Serra, who was dealing with the steel a roll and crease and fold and I don't know there you see there are extremely many words which are telling you how one should uh, behave with the uh, steel plates and uh, dependent on how you behave with the steel plate the form will be always different rolling steel is very different than creasing steel plate or folding steel plate or uh, cut steel plate or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this kind of uh, activities uh, 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 with the steel uh, plate uh, were those who uh, uh, had responsibility for carrying the, uh, uh, carrying the ideas of form. Uh, here a few uh, images of Sarah's, uh, Richard Serra's sculptures uh, uh, working just with the steel plates. Uh, and Sverefen, of course, who was dealing with steel plates in a bit different way, uh, organizing his exhibitions, for example, in Hammer Museum, uh, in a super interesting way, uh, 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 turning uh, uh, steel plate also uh, into a figure of exhibited object uh, together with the, uh, with the object itself. And here is a part of, uh, let's say, uh, drawing uh, showing all this uh, or some of, I don't know if there are 45 uh, elements here, maybe yes. Uh, uh, where uh, steel plates uh, uh, were uh, responsible for formal properties of these elements. Uh, and third idea uh, was uh, how to assure a contemporaneity and uh, at the same time, uh, history of these uh, uh, areas and these villages. Uh, which Chinese uh, were extremely, uh, extremely, uh, 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 for them it was extremely important, not only to be contemporary, but also to keep uh, history going on. Uh, now, I will, uh, you will realize that our steel plates are actually uh, plates that reflect, and by reflecting or highly reflecting, there are of course, several uh, degrees of reflecting. Uh, uh, they will reflect the uh, places and histories and memories of the of the of the areas. So this is, uh, uh, for example, uh, bus station. Uh, here is a planter where you can sit uh, uh, around the tree, and here are also. Uh, 
models and uh, renders of objects uh, which were uh, pictured in different light, uh, 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 trying to represent uh, uh, different parts of the day and different climates. Uh, here you see the boulder, then you see benches, then you see the garbage, uh, uh, garbage cans, then again a bus station, and uh, and uh, 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 and uh, water uh, water uh, hole or something. Uh, Yes, here is uh, basically the same. And here you see all the elements uh, that we produced and uh, proposed for this big city uh, done in, uh, in uh, reflecting uh, uh, material. Uh, and uh, I wanted uh, to end. Uh, I hope there is a voice. Uh, uh, showing you the film uh, because we had to deliver the film uh, uh, also uh, about our project. The project uh, won the third prize and uh, uh, I don't know if we hope for something or not but, uh, but, um, but yes it is possible that something like that will somehow be something.
Uh, yes. Uh, well, I uh, I have to say that uh, uh, extremely important uh, people for this competition uh, were also sitting in the space close to mine, Alexandra and Giacomo, and we were also working together with the Pascal Plummer, uh, Swiss architect. Uh, without them, actually, this project now when I'm looking at the film, it's, uh, it's really very nice, nicely done. And uh, then I'm thinking that uh, probably one should uh, end the lecture uh, uh, about beauty. Uh, beauty, of course, uh, uh, should also inform uh, our specific grammar and our study of architecture of the history. And uh, 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 together with other uh, uh, order elements and grammatical elements of architecture, actually, beauty is an important part of everything what we do. And that's exactly that what produces a specific identity. So thanks uh, everybody and uh, and uh, yeah. Yes, thank Enjoy you. The thank rest you. Of the day. Yeah. Thank you, Nevan, very much for this uh, beautiful and meaningful presentation. And um, I would like to ask uh, everybody who wants to to ask a question, to deliver a question, to write it down in the chat area. And meanwhile, I was uh, thinking to start myself with a question. Yeah. Um, I was uh, thinking when you showed us uh, uh, the house uh, Zverefen uh, made. Yeah. And uh, he, he had uh, this uh, fantastic reference to Palladio uh, Villa Capra. Yeah. And uh, my question uh, is, um, how do references uh, feed or transform into non-referential architecture? And uh, now I'm, I'm bringing into discuss discussion, uh, you know, the, the beautiful book of uh, Marcus uh, Breitschmidt. Uh, and, uh, uh, yes, 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 uh, yes. this is good question. Ideas which are very polemic and uh, yeah. very strong. Yes. And this is my question: How uh, how how can non-referential architecture uh, rise up from uh, having a so so hugely and uh, beautiful uh, luggage of uh, of uh, references from the big reservoir of uh, architectural history? Well, if you want me to, the whole lecture was somehow answer to that uh, architecture is about experience. It's about experience of space and about turning this experience into, uh, into matter uh, by constructing, building, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is experience of architecture which we cannot uh, somehow reference. Uh, we reference to something. But uh, by referencing to something, we create another kind of experience. And, uh, and we should uh, always uh, uh, remind ourselves that uh, uh, dealing with the history of architecture is not dealing with, uh, uh, with the images and dealing with ideology, uh, that dealing with, uh, 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 with the history should be dealing with the uh, uh, basic architectural elements, uh, walls, windows, uh, uh, volumes, uh, uh, I don't know, skeletons, uh, uh, whatever, uh, not, uh, with the, uh, not with the images uh, uh, that we read uh, uh, somewhere. So, uh, so I don't know uh, uh, if you really, uh, in a concentrated way, uh, is attached to the uh, to uh, creation of new spaces through experience of uh, and assert this experience to the world. Uh, then uh, uh, there is no uh, 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 this will not be uh, referential. This uh, own experience is uh, non-referential, and. Uh, uh, each of these uh, 
uh, experience that, that we somehow try to bring is uh, also uh, 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 has also something very uh, a very uh, 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 private one could say or very uh, 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 very uh, of our own. But the second part of them is very uh, universal. So uh, this uh, connection between this uh, 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 this uh, uh, or our own uh, way of seeing and uh, uh, universal understanding is uh, per perhaps that what makes uh, that uh, uh, experiential qualities uh, could uh, uh, be twofolded at the same and the, at the every moment. Everybody could understand them. They are not hermetic. Everybody could understand them, but at the same time, they are extremely singular. And this is uh, probably very difficult to achieve. And that's why we don't have so many good architects in the world. I don't know. This is my answer, kind of. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I was thinking I'm going to, uh, to stall a little because there are still no questions here, even though we, uh, there are many, many people uh, who attended the, the lecture. Uh, and I was thinking to this uh, fact that, uh, oh, well, also for my, my own experience studying Vakini, but also uh, for other great architects who put into the projects specific references and interpretations to other projects. And uh, they, uh, there are uh, very uh, pragmatic lessons of architecture who derive from other projects. But then my question is uh, when the building is uh, executed and it offers itself as experience, do these references uh, from behind the project still matter or is it only just uh, you know intellectual pleasure for us uh, professors of architecture to to underline i don't know they probably don't matter anymore because <laughs> they shouldn't be too strong if you just uh, copy the experience of Zumthor's uh, serpentine pavilion mm -hmm. uh, into your project of course you could do many uh, this is a very simple building. This is just one example which uh, comes to my mind. Uh, beautiful and uh, simple building, which is very easy to copy, and students are doing it. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, it could uh, uh, turn this experience could be turned into uh, a different kind of experience, and uh, and not only could but have to. And the new experience should be, I don't know, uh, so many times stronger than the old one. So the old one is somehow uh, 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 somehow disappearing uh, uh, in the new project. Uh, but also, uh, which is somehow something I I I, I learned from uh, from uh, uh, <laughs> Peter Smithson that making mistakes is super important. Uh, 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 create a, a mistaken interpretation of something is equally important as a, uh, as a correct one. So it could be even more important to misinterpret uh, something in a right, uh, nice way than to, to do it correctly. But at the same time, when one studies, of course, when students redraw all that, when they think about uh, this should be done with uppermost precision, uh, because just this precision uh, and uh, attentiveness to original uh, at that point of study uh, would, uh, uh, would be able to produce a very relaxed relationship uh, to it when you do it yourself. Uh, as with everything else, you know, uh, if you know something very well, you 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 don't have to uh, you don't have to fix yourself to it. Uh, you know it. I mean, and then you have to go on. The same is with the history. Yes. That's why we are visiting buildings, why we are redrawing them, why we are thinking about them, not to copy, but to 
kind of learn something about the world and to uh, to almost naturally uh, bring them further into new projects. Thank you. And uh, I have another question. Um, I would like to, to ask you regarding your, I think it's your personal point of view or um, otherwise it, it should be a polemic question regarding the, the uh, academic studio of architecture. Uh, the the nature of school of architecture. I, I wanted to ask you, uh, maybe today, you know, in the in this uh, period of pandemics of uh, sustainability of uh, profession, what what do you think uh, that students should be taught in the in the university of architecture? I mean, is there a certain hierarchy? Is there uh, the need to to have a hierarchy? in what we are teaching students? Should we focus on ideas? Should, uh, should uh, uh, the school uh, be focused on technology, on Neufert, on, I don't know, on, on what, what, do, what is your point of view? Well, my, my point of view was not, uh, uh, was, was changing uh, mm -hmm. for time. And uh, 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 what I noticed today, or in the, let's say last time, but uh, what I noticed uh, is that uh, uh, when you talk to students about certain things, and uh, you should do it in a in an interesting and engaging and nice way, and I perfectly I perfectly uh, understand when I do it okay and when I don't do it okay. Uh, because I see that on their faces. So people who are teaching architecture should uh, uh, do a lot of efforts actually to think how, if they want to teach, uh, how to uh, transmit uh, their experiences and their knowledge and their time and energy and so on into words and uh, drawings and uh, so that uh, they could uh, uh, that they could uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, inspire uh, young architects because we have a problem. We all know that we have a problem, not only with uh, Corona, but also with uh, uh, with extreme, uh, extremely uh, 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 many uh, elements uh, that. Uh, uh, became of architecture that became uh, 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 exterior, uh, exterior realized that uh, that uh, are falling outside architecture. Uh, 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 why? Uh, uh, I'm thinking now about technology of wood. I'm thinking about uh, uh, ecology. I'm thinking about uh, politics and uh, uh, and all that. Uh, all these kind of uh, 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 things that we uh, meet uh, today uh, uh, are uh, uh, taught from outside of architecture. Uh, and I really don't understand why they cannot be taught from the inside of architecture. Uh, because uh, 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 it, this is extremely important to realize uh, and to work on it, how architecture could be carried on from the inside of the profession. Yes, uh, we know that it could be carried from the outside of profession, but we as architects, uh, we should really fight that it's uh, uh, carried from the inside of profession. Uh, and I remember- uh, Way of drawing. I read a fantastic article a few days ago about this uh, automatism of drawing. Uh, big firms are today interested only in automatic uh, production of drawings, not in architecture. And uh, so even drawing, which we thought is the last resort of architecture, uh, is now taken out of the body of architecture into big uh, concerns where they uh, work with it in an uh, in extremely automatic uh, kind of way. So uh, we have a lot, uh, uh, we, we have a lot uh, uh, to work with, and, but, uh, and I don't know how to do it, 
but I'm sure that everything what we do uh, should be done in a nice way and uh, and uh, and a strong way and from the inside of our culture. Yes, thank you. And I, I remembered while you were speaking about uh, the moment when you underlined the importance of authorship of a, a student and an architect of discovering and assuming yes, this. this was during the diploma yes. because I had the feeling that just two or three of them are close to this idea of being authors, of being uh, uh, making their own things, uh, but in such a way that others, we others, could also understand them. So, yes. Yes, I'm going to ask uh, two questions uh, that have appeared uh, so far. You, you never knew you can also uh, read them uh, on the chat uh, area, but I'm going to read them loud. Uh, yeah. From Anna, the last project presented, the one about urban furniture, made yeah. me think about the certain architectural objects that become elements of art. When exactly does this happen and how? Uh, do you want me to say something about it? Uh, I don't know if you have a... Well, you know, this is a very strange competition. We were participating in competition, not being completely aware what it means. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, by saying uh, we will use just uh, steel plates, uh, which is, it, it, uh, of, yeah, could be an uh, element of art as well, as we saw in Richard Serra and so on. But uh, basically, uh, produced in a local workshops, uh, uh, we thought that, uh, that uh, basically these plates could be elements of architecture. Uh, in this way, the uh, uh, idea was to somehow to be very close to, because these are very small elements, be very close uh, of something which is, uh, uh, let's say, field of art or, or design or, but uh, uh, trying to be architect, be aware that uh, we want to be whole time uh, architect, architects by doing them. This is not easy and we still don't know uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if we succeeded or not. We got the third prize and uh, at some point in the summer we heard that maybe one or two or three will be built and then we will see. So I will tell you more about it if it happens. And uh, the other question from uh, Juana. I think you have answered it, but I'm, I'm going to, to ask the question. So the purpose of the references is to discover an essence of, that, of the project that will later be applied in such a different manner that the result can no longer be associated with the example. Uh, yes. Yes. It's about yes. the fading away of the reference. Yes, yes exactly. Uh, because it's so, let's say, uh, sees a swimming pool. Uh, it's so strong. And it could, uh, uh, all the references from it, or sees us, let's say, uh, 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 tea house, uh, so strong that uh, 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 immediately could produce so many uh, nice spatial situations that you could continue to work with. Uh, yes, I, I think yes, yeah. Yes. It depends for weak references, of course, maybe they don't have this capacity or potential to, uh, to lead you further. But strong references have this potential to create another uh, reality, so to say, where you could operate more free uh, uh, just uh, extracting some kind of basic, uh, uh, abstract basic uh, uh, elements from these references. Thank you, Nevan. Yes. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks to you, everybody. And uh, I want to say to everybody that uh, we, uh, on 11th of November, uh, we will be attending the final, uh, 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 the final jury of our uh, studio project. And we will uh, have uh, Nevin Fuchs, uh, Ryan Kenihan, and Robert Verich as guests. So we will have another uh, very interesting, we, uh, we think, uh, uh, debate on architecture based on the students' uh, work from within yeah. our studio. 
And I want to thank everybody for attending this, uh, this uh, beautiful lecture. Uh, we were almost 120, which is uh, encouraging. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much to everybody. Well, thanks, uh, Stefan. Uh, thanks you so much for inviting this one thing. Uh, thanks everybody to attending. And then I would like to say something about uh, November. We are, as you know, we are living in extremely uh, difficult time. And uh, I would do really uh, uh, all my best uh, that uh, uh, probably doing several things at the same time, uh, uh, but uh, I hope we will meet. Just that you know that yes. uh, yeah, we are trying to-, to We will see, out. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank you.